In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God showed the light that it was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. God said it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God said it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth and to separate the light from the darkness. And God said it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God said it was good. God blessed them saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God said it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. 
and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps upon the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. God who stretched the spangled heavens infinite in time and place Flung the suns in burning radiance through the silent fields of space. We, your children, in your likeness, share inventive powers with you. Great creator, still creating, show us what we yet might do. We have ventured worlds undreamed of since the childhood. O oh Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of us, mortals that you care for us? You have made us just a little lower than yourself, crowning us with glory and honor. You have given us responsibility to care for all the things and beings you've created. You have put all things under our feet, knowing we could trample them or make them our dance partners. The cows and the corn, the bees and the polar bears, all the beasts, the plants, the flying things, and everything that passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Hi friends, welcome. Welcome to all the children, large and small. Let's start with a God-filled good morning. On the count of three, we'll all put our love and God's love in us into the words, good morning. This can help to spread that love all around. Ready? One, two, three. Good morning! Did you hear the answer? <laughs> so we just heard the Bible scripture, Psalm 8, talking to God, saying, how majestic is your name in all the earth? And when I look at the heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon, the stars, and then human beings, people, 
and you care for us? I am in awe. The works of your finger. Did you ever think about God having fingers? The psalm writer is picturing God as a master artist, like a sculptor using God fingers to shape, to create a work of art. The heavens, the earth, and then the masterpiece, people. Ha <laughs> ha, you, me, God even made us to be like God. Whoa, think about the amazing and creative things we can do with our God-given fingers and hands. Can you do this? How about this one? That's tricky. Can you do this one? What else can you do with your hands? How about... <laughs> can you do this one? This is sign language spelling. It's I love you. <laughs> That's definitely like, like God showing signs of love. How about this? I like making music with my hands, with my fingers, and sometimes with other kinds of instruments too. This is a conga drum. I've been practicing how to make different sounds with my conga drum, and it is all about how you use your fingers and your hands. like this. <laughs> what about guitar? There's a lot of hand and finger action for guitar too. Listen. You might use your fingers, your hands, to make music. But maybe you like to paint and draw. Or maybe you write poems and stories. Maybe you like to garden and help things to grow. There's so many ways to create and share beauty, just like God does. When we see the heavens, the sky, nature, the science of how things work, animals, people, Remember God the artist, using God fingers to show beauty, majesty, wonder, and love to you and me and to every person. Let's pray together about that. Dear God, you are majestic, amazing. You created all things, things that we still have not discovered. You created us, wow. And you created us to be like you and to love like you. Help us, oh God. Help us to use our fingers, our hands, our hearts, our whole selves to create, to share beauty and to bless others. As we love you and others, the way you love us and all people. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Who's watching with you this morning? We have loved seeing pictures of babies and dogs and cats enjoying Grandview worship. Share those with us on our Facebook page. Sometimes there are service dogs at our live worship services, but now that we're online, well, there are even more critters and little people, and that's one of the pleasures that we can receive as a gift from God amidst these hard days. Our monthly communion service is this evening at 7 o'clock via Zoom. 
The link for tonight was sent out by email at the end of the week. But if you didn't get it or if you can't find it, just let me know and I would be more than happy to send it to you. The special offering for this week supports Grandview's housing-related service learning trips. Now this year, the youth are not gonna be able to go to Appalachia Service Project, but we're still sending funds so that the ASP staffers and volunteers in that region can still do the vital work of making homes warmer, safer, and drier. You can support this um, by writing a check or by the giving tab on our website. Now, even though the pastoral staff and the hospital visitation teams cannot visit in person, please let us know if you or someone you love has gone to the ER, is in the hospital, is sick, or is having some kind of procedure. We want to be there to support you through prayer and by talking in any way that we possibly can. Just let me know. You can email me, you can call me, you can text me. And also Pastor Andrea and Pastor Liz are also available. Remember, everything that is going on in the life of the church and through Grandview can be found on our website, grandviewumc.org. Steve Heineke, and I'm going to play a short piece that's kind of fun for me. In fact, it's the first and only piece I've memorized for my cello called Johnny's Gone to France. <laughs> Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, and some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, by that authority, telling the good news to absolutely everyone, pouring out the water indiscriminately, baptizing folks in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to live by everything that I have taught you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Good morning, today is Trinity Sunday and we are kicking off a summer series today called Creation, Body and Breath. And you might notice that there are three things there. Uh, all summer long we'll be focused on the ways that the Holy Trinity is mirrored on earth, giving us the sacred impulse to care for creation, to build community, and to protect human life, human breath. I'm excited to see how it unfolds. All the Trinity Sunday scriptures feature powerful interactions among divine and human and nature. I mean, just think about the gospel lesson we just heard. Here, Matthew makes his final scene, his culminating scene, this scene of the 11, 11 people walking in nature up a mountain. And they get to the top of that a mountain, and there they meet someone whose breath had been taken away from him, Jesus, but who is now breathing with them again. And, and they are catching their own breath right after the climb and probably thinking, Lord, 
are we ever thirsty? And so Jesus scoops up some water and holds it before them, showing them where to get a drink of clean water and saying, offer this water to every person you encounter. And of course, they're standing on a mountain. So imagine they are looking all around them and they can see what must seem like the whole wide world before them. And Jesus is saying, yeah, that broad, take this water without prejudice to all places and offer it to people so that they can have the water of life, the things that I've taught you, the things that I've insisted on from you, that you love God and love neighbor. That's the water, the clear thing that people need to breathe and to have life, that the whole earth needs to breathe and have life. The Genesis story for today directly connects the creator to the human. You know, we are made in the divine image, each and every one of us and all of us together. And the implications of that, if we took it seriously, would make things very different in our communities. Other aspects of creation too bear the divine imprint the divine word you are good you are sacred you are from me god says and if we took that seriously everybody who uses this scripture christians jews muslims who regards this as sacred if we took that seriously imagine what a different situation we would be in we might not have a climate crisis. We might not be dealing with novel viruses cropping up faster than ever right now because of it. We might be not facing the ways that ecological consequences unequally affect black and brown and Native American communities and we would not allow things to stand like this, like Flint, Michigan, still not having clean water, that water that Jesus will later come to offer, or asbestos or lead in our schools. So in our summer series, we're gonna be reflecting on the ways that both the unity and the diversity of the Trinity are mirrored on earth in the interrelatedness of creation and community, body and breath. Our hope is that through our worship, we will find the spirit directing us and moving us forward in life changing action. We always want our worship to bear fruit. You know, I looked a lot at art related to the Trinity this week, and I noticed a few consistent themes in it, not just triangles, which you would expect, uh, but a lot of circles, a, a lot of movement. I noticed a lot of color too, often a full rainbow spectrum, which has extra meaning for us now at the beginning of Pride Month. A, a ton of creation imagery, a clear connection being drawn between creator and creation in these Trinitarian images. And in this one, which is my favorite, from the Nigerian artist uh, Ram Isakai, some beautiful images of humanity clearly connecting the sacred to the earthly. There's a real focus on incarnation here with those three people. The Trinity is often thought of as too mysterious for humans to begin to contemplate. And in, indeed, that's true. Too big and confusing to grasp. But 
Throughout this summer, we'll be focusing instead on the Trinity as a down-to-earth reality, something mirrored in what we can see and touch, something that should make a difference in who we are and in what we do. The theology that teaches us about the threeness and oneness of God should make us more profoundly devoted to the, the unity and the diversity, the, the difference and the wholeness of earth, that potential. So instead of just thinking of, of God the Father or the parent, God the Creator, we'll, we'll think about creation and community, climate, probably more seas too. We love alliteration around here. Instead of just thinking about God the Son, the incarnate or embodied one, we'll be thinking about the sacredness of all bodies individually, as well as the power of the whole body, the, the church or the whole human family, the whole family of creation. And instead of just thinking about the Holy Spirit, the, the wind or breath of God, we will focus on wind and breath, the air people breathe, the air inhaled and exhaled by trees and otters, by the oxygen in our oceans necessary for coral reefs and whales to exist. Throughout this summer series, you'll hear us reflecting on how we can make this living, knowable trinity thrive. And, you know, I know that individuals in this church, this church itself, are doing that in some significant ways. When you, you know, write a letter to your local police department and say, hey, I want to know more about what you are doing to make sure that everybody in our community is safe. Everybody is being treated fairly. When you let that be known, you are living out a uh, Trinitarian faith. You may never have thought about it that way before. Uh, so through this series, we hope to challenge one another to grow bolder, to connect what we do and who we are with uh, our understanding of God. And so you might consider commenting in the in response to the sermon so that others might be challenged by some creative idea that you have and uh, we might brainstorm and grow through this. We always want our worship to bear fruit. Now I want to offer you a benediction, a blessing and a charge. A charge means a, a challenge, right? So this was a, a challenge. This is based on a challenge that uh, is given in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 and 13. It's a, a blessing and a charge given to the early church, and it is a blessing and a charge for the church today. Finally, siblings, farewell. Fare well. Get your house, the earth, in order. Listen to my plea. Agree with one another to do this so that you can live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Remember, Jesus said, I will be with you until all things are made right. Amen. está para construir con él un mundo fraternal enviado soy de Dios mi mano lista está para construir con él un mundo fraternal los ángeles no son enviados a cambiar un mundo de dolor por un mundo de paz me ha tocado a mí hacerlo realidad ayúdame Señor, hacer tu voz.
voluntad. Send out in Jesus' name, our hands are ready.